Welcome to Learn from the Experts, presented by the WBOA, which stands for the Women's Business Owners Alliance of the Pioneer Valley. We are a nonprofit organization of over 100 women of varying uh, background of businesses and um, expertise. I am Freda Brown, owner of Divorce Financial Services, and my co-host today is... Hi, I'm Ida Tassinari with the Real Living Real Estate Professionals, and my job is to help you find your path home. Thank you. And today we're interviewing... I'm Alexandra Tresh. I'm the owner of Fragrant Elegance Soy Candle Company. Ours is a luxury soy candle company. We carry no dyes, no phthalates, and no preservatives in any of our candle products. They're all handcrafted, and they're all hand-poured. Fabulous. And today we're going to talk about um, candle lighting and entertaining with candles. Mm -hmm. How to add elegance naturally to your home using candles. It's actually very easy. When you think about it, how many times have we wanted to have a romantic dinner, for example? What do we do? We add mood lighting to it. All of a sudden, it just it creates a whole different elegance to your home, right? Or what about when you want to relax? You always think about sometimes going into the bathroom, lighting up some candles, having a nice bath. Because what that does, it just helps to create this kind of romantic, relaxing kind of atmosphere that we want to have. So adding lighting in that aspect can actually really help add some elegance very easily to your home. So where do you decide where you put the candles to add this, the lighting? Well, what's important always is you want to keep it away from anything that could easily catch on fire. You always want to keep them on a flat level base. And if you do happen to have any kids or animals or pets, you always want to make sure you keep it away. Those are three very basic, simple candle and fire safety tips. So if you're going to have a dinner, for example, you can always have your food set up where it's going to be. You can always have the pretty candles in between you. If you do have a candle that has a fragrance, then sometimes I suggest you keep it a little bit further away. Only because depending on what you're going to eat, you don't want it necessarily to mingle with what you have. Unless it's something that is maybe unscented, then you can actually have it right there in front of you, and that could be lovely. Now, do you recommend different uh, fragrances of the candles to go with different dinners, with like a pairing of wine? Oh, you actually could do that. Well, what's interesting is talking about how we're going to mingle them together is there's actually something called sensory decorating. And what that is, it's the use of candles and the use of aromas to actually complement your decor or whatever entertaining that you're going to be doing. The science behind that is most people don't realize that your sense of smell is actually connected to your emotion and it's connected to your memory. So most people, when I ask them, do you have a favorite scent? All of a sudden they could think of something that they, could, that they love from maybe when they were a child. Maybe they smell something that reminds them of grandma's cookies, right? Mm -hmm. I see you ladies smiling, so I think yeah. everybody can relate to that, right? Or maybe there's an aroma of a flower of a loved one that they gave to you, for an example. So knowing this, with your question there of how you would pair them, is a lot of times with dinners, I usually suggest something that's a little bit more neutral. So maybe like a vanilla could be very nice, something nice and subtle. Or let's say, for example, you haven't necessarily had your wine yet. You could have a nice subtle fragrance and maybe have a pretty Chardonnay or something that's very pretty and fruity almost. It's going to kind of complement what you're actually going to be eating for your dinner. So we have a Chardonnay uh, candle? We do. Wow. We actually do, and it smells fantastic. It's definitely one of our best sellers, especially around January, New Year's, right? So also now, if you're taking a nice, relaxing uh, bath, mm -hmm. and you have some bath salts, and what other fragrance would go with the uh, relaxing for Ooh, a candle? Great question. What I really like is something like a nice lemongrass, for example. It's so nice, even a patchouli. One of the most popular ones could be a lavender and a chamomile. What's nice with a lavender and a chamomile together is lavender can be very aggressive. As far as like an aroma, and if you guys have smelt that before, it could be very strong, where a chamomile can actually mellow it down a little bit, so you could have a nice relaxing atmosphere. And those kind of fragrances actually tend to be really popular when you think of spas, and I think that's why people mm. like to use them in the bath, like you said, right. because all all of a sudden you feel like you're having a home spa, an oasis in your own bathroom, and mm -hmm. it's just great. Now the oil uh, fragrances that you use, are they uh, essence of oil, and what do they come from? They're going to be essential oils. Everything okay. we use is essential oils, and then if we do have any fragrances, we make sure everything is phthalate-free. One of the biggest things about our company, like I said in the beginning, is we use no dyes, no phthalates, and no preservatives. So what exactly are phthalates? Phthalates are actually a chemical component that you could find in some fragrances, but not necessarily just that. You can also find them in some rubbers. You can yes. find them, yeah 
banned plastics exactly. So there's a little bit of controversy about that as far as them causing cancer. Mm -hmm. So a lot of companies are actually choosing to remove them out, which is fantastic. And that's one of the things is we purposely do is make sure we don't have anything with phthalates in our products. Now also, is that the soy candles that has less soot or um, residue when you put them out as the old fashioned type of a regular wax candle? That's a great question. Soy wax it generally comes, it comes from the wax of soybeans, it comes from the oil. So it's going to be different than a traditional candle. And what you mean as far as it having less soot is that soy wax actually, it's a renewable source because it's coming from soybeans. So a lot of times it could burn more clean and it actually burns at a lower temperature. So that's why most times with soy candles, you'll notice that you get a longer burn time out of them. So something like we carry a 21 ounce, for example, and you can easily get 120 plus hours out of it because it burns at a lower temperature, so you're not going through it so quickly. A lot of times when something's burning really, really fast, it can cause the soot. But also another aspect people forget is that when you do buy candles, there's a warning on there to make sure you trim your wicks, and that's so exactly. important. Yeah. I can't tell you how many times I have to emphasize that fact that trimming your wick will not only extend the life of your candle, it's going to also help with that aspect of creating soot, which you don't want. Right, I didn't exactly. know that. Now you do. Yeah. Now I do. No, yeah. So make sure you read your warning labels. You know? And it lowers the flame. Yes. And it's less likely that any glass or anything mm -hmm. else would then get too hot and maybe crack or something. Exactly. And that's why it's on the warning label because that is a safety aspect of it. Just like the three different safety aspects mm -hmm. I talked in the beginning of our conversation is that trimming the wick is important for that as mm -hmm. well. Now also, are these uh, mostly online orders or home parties that you um, sell your products? Actually, we have an online boutique, but we also do have stores that carry our retail products as well. We're currently in four states. We have in Massachusetts, Connecticut, Georgia, and Wyoming. So there, I believe in Massachusetts right now, you could find us in East Long Meadow. You can also find us in Westfield, and you can also find us in Southwick as far as being local. That's interesting. How did you wind up in Wyoming? Wyoming, actually, some of our business partners, I actually talked to them online, and it's a Christian-based company, and what they do is it's a nonprofit as well, and they work with other companies that help to try to promote within the United States, but they also help other I would say like other industries possibly. They help other organizations. So this company in particularly, they like to work with businesses to help nonprofits. And that's one of the things that my husband and I do in our company. And when you see our vision is that we work with some nonprofits here in Massachusetts as well. And what these nonprofits do is they help men, women, and children to help restore their lives, whether they're homeless or oh. from prison. So that's one of the things that we're passionate about. And this company that we're working with in Wyoming, they're passionate about the same thing. So right. they work with other companies that help maybe women that were slaved in other countries, they help children. So there's a lot of aspects that they do. So working together, we're hoping to save the world together. Well, that's fantastic. great. Fantastic. Yeah. Thank you. So back to entertaining. Mm -hmm. So how can I decorate my house for Thanksgiving? Where should I put candles at Thanksgiving time? Well, I wouldn't put them near the turkey, that's for sure, because you know everyone's going to be wanting to reach over, right? You don't want them to be knocked over. Well, I know particularly with Thanksgiving, I mean, our tables are just, they're cluttered, right? Mm -hmm. So sometimes maybe what you want to do is do something a little bit smaller, like a tea light, for example. Tea lights are so nice and small, and you can find some beautiful little tea light holders that you can actually put them around. Or I know around Thanksgiving time, most people tend to have maybe a dresser or some nice area where they put all their extra food or their decorations, right? Because we have so many guests and sometimes you can't fit everything on the table. So same thing, it could be nice to have some little decor there as well too, to make it look very nice and pretty. So how long have you been in the business? Well, with our company, we've been doing this for about three years, but I've been in customer service and sales for, gosh, about 15 years now. So we just love what we do. Now, have you followed any of the large um, manufacturers of candles in this area in New England. We have a lot of large companies mm -hmm. that manufacture across the country. Right. Have you followed any of their business plans or have you learned anything from their past experiences? Well, what's interesting is our what we do, being a soy wax company, is a little bit different of a clientele, and it's a different industry than something like a traditional candle. So for us, we tend to find that our clients tend to be more eco-friendly. Okay. They, you know what I mean? So it's, it's gonna be a different yes. client, yeah. yes. So it's gonna be a very different kind of market. 
Mm -hmm. than it's it not is just, with those. Not just uh, burning a candle to look yes. good, but burning a candle to save the world. To save right. the world, right? Right. <laughs> and you have a cause w for your candle, and we I commend you for that. That's awesome. Thank you. Yeah. That was one of the biggest things that my husband and I were big about when we started our company, is that the whole idea for us is to bless to be a blessing. So we want to help others, and that's our business allows us to do that, mm -hmm. and that's important for us. Tell us some more about scents. What, what, what are good scents for Christmas time? Ooh, Christmas. Now, there are two different types of people around Christmas time, right? They like to have their Christmas trees, maybe a real one, and then there's people that tend to do a fake one. So if you have a real Christmas tree, that's awesome because you're already getting the, the beautiful aromas with the Christmas trees. So what could be very nice to pair with that is maybe like a cranberry. Mm -hmm. Right? We could think of something that maybe has a nice little spice to it that actually could pretty smell very nicely and help complement something like the Christmas tree. If you tend to do a tree that's not real, which there are some people who have to, right? In that case, you could find yourself a very nice aroma that maybe has the nice pine and the spruce. Maybe not too aggressive because sometimes people don't like an aggressive Christmas tree aroma, but something that's just very nice and subtle where when you walk in the room, it feels like that tree is alive, even though mm -hmm. it's not. And it just, it brings this whole happiness and cheer right to you. Because I do find that um, fragrances mm -hmm from your past bring back fond memories in some times. Yes. When you have the scent of uh, somebody's apple pie mm -hmm. or something, you bring back the fa the sense of family mm -hmm. from your past. Exactly, and that's what I was talking about with the sensory decorating, about how the, your sense of smell is connected to your memories and your emotions, and you can use that powerfully when you are decorating for that reason, is that when you do have a holiday get together, you know you have family and friends, why not? I mean, so many people can relate to that. Or even the fact, like you said, an apple pie and a pumpkin pie, those are comfort foods. Who doesn't like right. those? So you smell that, and all of a sudden, who doesn't get a happy smile on their face, right? right? Or exactly. maybe feel hungry. And they glance what everybody's there for, <laughs> so, right? So where's the pie? <laughs> where's the pie, exactly? Well, that's the best kind. It has no calories. That's, that's, you know, should I tell people, just don't eat them. Please don't eat them, but yeah, you can smell them. Yes, because now soy is from the soybean. So where is most of the soybeans uh, grown in our country? Actually, the ones that we use are here in the United States. They're going to be out in the West. I believe four states tend to have them the most. And so what we use comes from here in the United States. And we make sure that we do that. It's really important to us. Mm -hmm. Just like the rest of our, for our glass, for example, we make sure it comes from U.S. glass makers. The boxes we use from our product, they're recycled and they also come here from the United States as well. That's a really important mm -hmm. thing. And how many employees do you have? Actually, right now it's my husband and I. Oh, wow. So you're quite busy. Oh, we are very busy. <laughs> very, very busy. And so what other uh, tips would, would you have for any entrepreneurs in the holding padding pattern waiting to start their own business? Ooh, well, I think it's always important to know why you want to start a business. For us, like actually what happened with us is it started as a hobby, which is very interesting is we did this for ourselves. We found out all the different chemicals that were actually in traditional candles and being health conscious ourselves, we were like, we can't do this. So we got rid of everything we had and then we searched for something that we thought we could use and we couldn't find it. So we started to do it ourselves. So as we started to do it for ourselves, we had more and more people that were interested because you start to find out there are people that are eco-friendly. There are people that don't want the chemicals. There are people that don't want the dyes in their candles. So pretty much what started as a hobby for us blew up into a business very quickly. But I do feel it's important for people to know why they're doing something. Because if you don't know why you want to start your business, exactly. if you don't have a passion for it, it's not going to work. It's not. When it gets hard, you're just going to give up. I think we all and we all know that being in business. So you, you mentioned dyes. So are dyes, you know, like I know, like they're supposed to, you're not supposed to eat anything with red dye number six or whatever that <laughs> is. So what it, what is the, is there any factor of the of the dyes being in in the um, in the candles that make a difference? No. You know, in candles in general. Well, for us, the reason why we choose not to is because you really don't know what chemicals could be in there. And I believe right now there aren't, we actually haven't been able to find any dyes that didn't necessarily have chemicals in them. So for us, we choose not to. So you have no, no dyes? We no, don't use any no dyes. So no color in No colors. Thing. So what you'll find when you look at our products, for example, is there might be slight color variations, and that's going to be due to the essential oils and what's used, but there are actually no dyes. Because when you put a dye into a candle, you also have to put a UV inhibitor. We're talking and more chemicals. So for us, we choose just not to do that. It's important for us. So all to. those colored candles out there might have harmful colors. They, they may, they may not, but mm -hmm. like I said, for us, we just choose not, not, to, do not to do it because 
why. Also because not having dyes in our product, our idea is that it can be easier incorporated into your decor. Because for example, Christmas time comes around, you have red and green everywhere. If you want to add in maybe another red candle, you have so much red going on, it doesn't work. Or if you have something that maybe doesn't have a color, it can actually be integrated a little bit easier. Mm -hmm. And right. then you just get the ambiance of the Exactly. Color. Or say you find one that's orange, for example, and you're like, oh my God, I can't put orange with red and green. Well, it's not orange now. Now it actually yeah. has no color. It's going to be just the neutral color of it, so then it could be integrated very easily for you. Yeah. So do you have different um, sizes? I mean, the tea lights and is it a, a half pint or I'm going by some of the other uh, candle uh, suppliers? What? What size are your candles made in? Right now we have a 21 ounce candle, which is our most popular. We do have tea lights, and then we did also bring in wax melts. We did that for maybe oh. people who don't want to necessarily burn candles. Mm -hmm. Wax melts are nice too, because you can put two different ones together into one of your burners. It kind of like, make your own fragrance almost. Right, now so do you have like the tapered candles? No, the reason why we don't do that is because soy wax is a softer wax. Okay. Remember what I talked about that it has a lower burn temperature? Yes. So because that's a lower burn temperature, it is going to melt much faster. So you usually can't get votives and you can't get the tapered candles just in soy. It would actually have to be a blend. So you can only really do just a jar. Or like I said, the only ones you could get that's not in a container would be a melt and that's not really a candle. Yeah, that would I just see. be put into your melters or your burners. Mm -hmm. And with your company, do you have um, any candle holders or are you just selling the candles themselves? Not yet, but we've been looking at that. Okay. We've actually had people ask us, so we're considering doing that as well too. Okay. We think that'd That's be great. great. Excellent. Yeah. yeah, thank you. Excellent. So it's great talking to you. Yes, I enjoy having you with us today. And thank if you, you want any information, you can always go to our website and check out Alexandra Trush. And it's WBOA.org for any additional information about our guest and her products today. Thank you for being with us. Thank you, ladies, for having me. It was great. Thank, Thank you. you.